document and some of these things may be a little bit different I'm on a PC and in the classroom we have Macs or if you're on a Mac uh, you could always go to file a new and what we're going to do is we're going to number of pages find as one we're going to select tabloid now this P here stands for something it stands for PICUS and most news publications and magazines use a combination of both PICUS and inches to lay out designs on dummy sheets or whatever now one thing that you need to know is that six picas equal an inch so for a gutter one pica would be an eighth of an inch two picas would be a quarter of an inch uh, three picas would be a half so forth and so on okay so we're going to set this up as five columns because most designs are five column layouts well, they could be more than that or they could be less than that as a general rule inch uh, border on all sides which is fine and we're not going to worry about a bleed and a slug right now this this stuff is different so uh, and also in InDesign I'm going to show you something if your unit of measurement is set to picas you can easily type in inches say we would type in 0.5 for half an inch and if I if I click on my tab it's automatically going to change that okay so it's going to be 0.6 or so that's half an inch um, let's see three picas would be half an inch actually all right so um, it will automatically change what you're doing your units of so I'm going to click on OK and this is our sample layout over here toolbox and over here is some pages windows stroke and different things that we'll get to later on in the course so if I wanted to change measurements I can go to edit I can go to preference I can go to units and increments and I can change my spread to inches okay and then I could click on OK and we'll see now that our rulers are measured in inches so this is ten and a half by 16 or seven, uh, 10 and a half or excuse me 11 by 17 is tabloid size and this is what this is now 11 by 17 all right so every uh, between this this is one inch two inch three inch four inch so the way that InDesign measures is by two inch increments at a time or that's what you get with your numbers all right so one thing that you can really do pin on your dummy page is you can click and drag down what we call these little lines here now you can move these around so say from the top this might be around two inches from the top of the page and I'm going to have a square photo right here and I might have a cut line on the side this might be a three column story and it might be uh, six inches deep um, I don't know I don't know yet what our assignment editor has given us uh, but we're just kind of playing around you can also drag out horizontal lines These blue lines are guides that help you to lay out your information now you can drag it and make them disappear by dragging them back up to the um, the rulers where you pulled them out of okay so what we really need to do that I'm gonna go back to preferences I'm going to go back to units and increments and I'm going to change this back to PICAS because our layout sheets are in PICAS okay they're not in um, they're not in inches so our dummy sheets are in PICAS and we want, when we're laying out a page based on what our dummy sheets are we want to make sure that we're our unit of measurement is the same and it's not confusing you, if you see I'm moving this up and down and over on the side here you see a little dotted line moving up and down on the ruler so it shows me I can get really precise with where I want this to be alright now the other thing that we do when we're laying out dummy pages anytime you lay out an area with an X through it like a box with the X through it that means that we're laying out an area for an actual um, and so we can do that with InDesign. It's really cool because it mimics how you would lay out a dummy sheet. 
So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click this box with an X through it. I'm going to click up here. I'm going to make this image holder two columns wide and it's about 30 pikas down. Um, remember uh, that would be if we divide six into 30 you get five so about five inches deep. so we get a two column width by five inches deep here so now what I could do is I put an image in here I can go to file and I can go to place and I have a practice folder with a bunch of different photos in it I'm gonna find that practice folder let's see it's in my documents here so I'm just going to find it really quickly it's in unit one practice and so a bunch of different photos here if you click on it you see I get a preview down here I'm going to go ahead and uh, double click on that and automatically places it here now, I might not like the placement of this so you can click on this arrow here and you can click once on that photo and you can move this photo now, following the cropping rules that we'll discuss later on, uh, you don't want to chop things off and make make it make the photo look unnatural. This is fine right here, and I'm just really basically just moving it around in here. So that's fine for our photo here. Okay, and we could actually have a headline that's three columns or whatever. Rule of thumb is if you have a photo that's two columns want your headline to be the width of your fo photo here all right so I'm going to click on the T tool and I'm going to draw a text box you have to draw just like we drew the box for our photo you have to draw text boxes so you can type text it's not like word you just start typing you have to draw these placeholders where you can actually enter photos and type so I could say Anna enjoys time with little girl Anna enjoys time with her kitty. Alright, so we can't really see this is kind of small. We might want to bump this up. Remember, headlines are supposed to be punchy, alright? So we might go 24 with this. Um, we can come over, we can uh, justify this if we want. It doesn't look too good, so you might need to bump that up a little bit. That's a little bit too much there. So 30 might be okay. All right. Now this is going to need to go down. Because what we'll have to have before a headline is we'll need to have an area. And you your area for a cut line. It can be about, oh, it could be, it could be more punchy than... Uh, copy or your body text for the story itself. So we might even go with the sans serif font. We might go with Arial. We might make this bold. And also italic is another way that people or newspapers make their uh, cut lines noticeable. We might pump it up two points. So to say on the hottest day of the summer, the Smith's little girl Anna and her adopted kitty Winston enjoy the outdoors. All right. So what we've done here is we've written a. We haven't done everything properly yet, but essentially we've written a um, cut line that is written in the present tense your is very important they should answer who what when and where the where's outdoors the what is of course holiday. the when or the when could be the hottest day excuse me excuse. the who is the little girl all right so who what when and where is what your cut line should always answer and they should always be written you also need to have a little space up here and in smaller and we're going 
to make sure of all these different justifications. We're going to write justify this photo credit by John Rodriguez. All right. And so our photo credit or our byline needs to be a bit smaller so we can bump that now in and we can make that italic. So right now we've done everything for a photo that we need to do. All right. We've even introed the story here. We have byline, we have our cut line, and a little bit further down, we have our headline. All right. Now, there's a couple of things that you can do to see your layout better. So what we could do is we can come over here to our zoom tool, and we can draw a box around this and zoom in. All right. You can hold down the space on your keyboard and get this little hand. All right. If I click. While I'm holding down the space bar, I can move my design around. So I can actually see what I'm doing. Also, command on that control on the keyboard, plus or minus. Control minus will zoom out, and control plus will zoom in. And I'm just holding my keyboard down. I get the little hand, I click, and I can move this around. So it makes seeing my design a little bit easier. Now, if I want to get a preview, of what my design looks like here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I can go to view, I can go to screen mode, and I can go to preview. And this is going to give me a preview of what this actually looks like. All right. So, so see, I could probably, I just go up here to my black tool. Black tool is your, your black arrow is your selection tool. Anytime you want to move anything around, have to use your black arrow tool. This white tool, of uh, course, allows you to move um, your photo around inside of an uh, image box, and it also allows you to resize your photo inside of an image box. But I want my my move tool here, and I just click on my text box, and I can use the arrows to move this up a little bit of time, trying to tighten everything. I need to make sure that the space between of my A sender in my byline and the bottom of my photo is equal to the D sender in my byline and the top or the A sender of my cut line. So I need to make sure that my spacing is equal here. I want it to look as possible. So this is pretty much how to lay out a photo with a byline in your cut line and how to write it in the present tense. And of course, you need to remember over two sentences for your cut line. Cut line should always be written in the present tense and answer who, what, when, and where. And then, of course, your um, headlines should pop. And you should follow the rules, page 27, of writing headlines in your text. So this is pretty much it for this. Now, one thing that we need to, do, we need to save this file. It's very, very important. Okay, where we save this file. I want to save it, all right, where my photo is at, or I need to save it on the same folder. Reason being is, I'm going to practice here, and I'm going to put photo layout practice, get the name. If you move your photo, somewhere else other than the folder it was originally imported from into InDesign, then this box is going to be red and it's going to have an X through it and this photo is not going to show up. InDesign imports or links to um, photos. It's not an actual embedded photo. It's a linked photo. So the resource isn't, this photo resource is not a part of the InDesign file. It's only a representation so if I move my photo in a different folder than my InDesign, then what I've essentially done is mess my design up. So with InDesign, it's a good idea to keep all your files organized. Have one project file, and in that project file, have a folder for all your photos, your InDesign layouts, and make sure that you keep it together at all times. If you move the one, and just make sure you move the folder where all your resources are kept. Otherwise, you'll get links, broken images, and a messed up design. The last thing you do is you export this. So we can go to export. 
we're going to choose Adobe PDF and I'm just going to say desktop and it's going to give you a couple of things here so one thing to do is I want to make sure that all pages is checked. we had spreads we would check spreads but we don't it was a single page layout marks and bleeds you can put crop marks if you want to we'll talk a little bit more about this stuff here it's very important for people in the back who are shooting images to go to print your crop marks, seed marks, registration marks are very important color bars if your photos things like that so we can go to export and it's going to export this PDF it should now be on my desktop I can open up this PDF and I see this is a registration mark here and this is a crop mark here. Registration marks are used to line up plates or crop plates on the printing press and we'll talk more about that as this uh, course progresses. All right, so this is a PDF. The reason I don't want you to send me PDFs or upload PDFs to the forum at all times is PDFs or self-contained documents. Remember how I said that if you move an InDesign file around and you move images around and things like that, you get a broken design. I don't want a bunch of image files and InDesign where I have to relink everything. When you turn in a project, I want you to turn it in as a PDF. That is a single file. It kind of wells everything together and throws it all into a complete document and the PDF I can just open that up and grade it and I don't have to try and um, redesign what you're sending me. So it's very very important that you send me the proper documents. If you send me an InDesign file and photos and things like that you just upload randomly to the forum I will not accept it and if you miss the line because you did not pay attention of course you will suffer the penalty. So uh, be very cognizant of what you send to me. It's important. All right, so that is the practice for this. I uh, hope you've had a enjoyable time, and I hope you've learned a little bit about page layout. As we progress, we'll get a lot deeper into this stuff, make a lot more sense down the road. So, good luck.